Hello everyone and welcome to the History Unicorn, Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of Bigfoot, crawlers, and other cryptids from the subreddits. r slash Bigfoot, r slash crawler sightings, and r slash humanoid encounters. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly what just ran across the trail. It's been about a month since I saw the wood ape. I really don't know what it was. The neighborhood I live in, was carved out of a huge wildlife forest. With a creek that runs alongside it. Ultimately connecting to old Hickory Lake, Tennessee. The trees here are at least 50 feet plus tall and grown. There's a cul-de-sac with a small, keep out. Make believe fence onto the thick wooded forest. It's too busy for a normal trek through the woods, but it's open to walk into it. There's a small sidewalk outlining the cul-de-sac and my pitbull, Husky kept pulling me towards the wooded area. He stopped and just gazed ahead. I too started looking into it, because of a sound of leaves being brushed about. It's normal to hear branches breaking and leaves rustled from the usual. Beavers, deer, rabbits, squirrels, etc. But this sound was weird, and I'm looking directly in front of me maybe six to seven feet ahead. And I look slightly up, and see a small tree's leaves swaying from side to side. I follow the branches down the bark, and something disrupted my view. Like when you catch something out of the corner of your eye, I saw the motion of back muscles. Exactly what you'd see watching someone's back as they, I don't know. Stock some shelves. That's what caught my eye, and at first I thought. Hum. An animal, wait WTF stands on two legs like that. Immediately freaked out and ran away. I couldn't find any records of apes in Tennessee. Which has me boggled. But also literally being in my backyard. It was about 8 feet tall, and hairy, but not like fur. The hairs were long and yellowish light amberish colored. Similar to a gibbon ape. I could have broken the internet, but I was legitimately frightened to try and record it. Any ideas? There are many comments for this post, if you would like to dig deeper into this encounter. The link is in the description below. My girlfriend and I are renting a cabin in West Virginia. On Thursday, a nasty ice storm came through and knocked out the power. It has been out ever since. The whole county is dark and will be for a while. The animals are acting bold. Last night my girlfriend and I walked out to the end of the long driveway, to get something out of the car. Her dog started staring at the edge of the field and went towards it. He is young, and so he gets distracted and does sometimes wander. He doesn't run away, but you will look up and see him behind the house or something. Anyway my girlfriend runs to him and starts to bring him back, when I spot something at the edge of the field. It's what the dog was looking at. I see it run across the road, and into the field. It was very low to the ground and pale in color. It's too fast and dark to make out what it is. I assume it's a coyote. So I call out to her, hey. There's something over there. Get back here. And she walks back over to me by the car. From there we hold the light and shine it over that direction. I see its eyes looking at us. Then I see more sets of eyes. Probably about seven in total. They are shifting up and below the hill in the field. Hiding and peeking out to see us. At this point, we still think it's coyotes. So I keep the light on them, while she gets what she needs from the car. The thing is, I kept my light and my eyes on them the whole time. And they seemed to stand up. Suddenly their eyes shine would rise up, as if they stood up on their back legs. Their eyes went from about 1 to 2 feet off the ground to easily 5 to 6 feet. I did not mention this to her. And I just said coyotes, let's go inside. Throughout the night, we would have to go outside to put gas in the generator. As the power was still off. She held the flashlight, and I filled up the generator. She is shining the light around, keeping an eye out for anything. As well as keeping the dog with us. She spots two sets of eyes about 100 yards away, at the bottom of the big hill that the house sits on. She says, something's down there. I say, coyotes or deer. 
she says, whatever it is, it just doubled in size. And sure enough, I look. And these things are rising up and back down like the ones earlier. We have coyotes here. Everything about these events screams coyote to me. But I cannot fathom how they stood up like that. I saw it run across the road. And though I did not get a good look at it, it was not a deer. It was fast and low to the ground. It did not bound and jump like the deer do. I've been thinking about it all day. Like it had to be a coyote, but then how did it get so tall? This was originally posted on, r slash paranormal. But I found it on r slash crawler sightings. My family has around 360 acres, in northern Oklahoma. That has been in our family since the land rush. Growing up, the family would meet there for Thanksgiving and Christmas. But as the family expanded, it was quickly outgrown. Nowadays, I'm about the only person that goes there. And I go, went there regularly to train with my firearms. I went there earlier this year, and had an experience that shook me so badly, that I haven't spoken about it until recently. And will never go back there alone. I arrived around 2 p.m., and set up my targets, but something felt off. I use an electronic headset for hearing protection, that also amplifies ambient noise, and I noticed that everything seemed to stop. No wind, no bugs, no birds, nothing. Just complete and total silence, which is very unusual for the area. I run my normal drills, and as the sun starts to set, things get stranger. Odd smells, like a dirty litter box plus body odor started coming around, and I noticed that the coyotes were crossing the field west of me. Almost as if they were consciously avoiding entering the woods nearby. Then, I started hearing interference coming over my headset. And what sounded like disembodied voices, speaking in an indiscernible language. That I couldn't hear with the naked ear. Now, I'm starting to worry. I start gathering my things, and I hear what sounds like a woman's blood-curdling screams coming from the woods. I've heard mountain lions and bobcats squaring off, which we do have on the property. But this sound was neither of those things. Around the same time, I got what I can only describe as a nauseating, omnidirectional feeling of being watched. Shortly followed by very distinct footsteps, trudging through the foliage in the tree line. Approximately 30 yards from my position. I've been an avid hunter, since childhood and familiar with noises of the woods and the cadence of the footsteps were indicative of a large, bipedal creature oddly, human-like. Very concerning, considering I'm in the middle of a large swath of property, that's 25 miles from the nearest populated area. I pull my phone out to take video, and I start scanning the tree line with my flashlight. Standing behind a tree, at the edge of the tree line, was a tall, black silhouette with spindly limbs, and a pale face, looking directly at me. I managed to capture a great still image of it, from the video that I will try to find and attach. I quickly grabbed my range bag, and made a run towards my truck. I get about 50 yards from the truck, and the light post. On our property, that is hooked up to county power, and has never turned off in the 20 years I've been going here. Suddenly cuts off. Now, I'm blindly running, in the direction I believe my truck is in. While I hit the unlock button on my fob to find the lights. I get in my truck, speed off, and as I'm watching in the rear view, the light post turns back on. I apologize for the long post, but I'm finally ready to get this out in the open for interpretation. I tend to think of myself as a rational person, that doesn't necessarily believe in the woo kind of stuff. Although, my mother described me as being sensitive, and somewhat gravitated towards energies, as a child. Hence why I found our slash paranormal to ask. I was doing everything I could to rationalize, or come up with a reasonable explanation for the things I was experiencing. But I have no explanation. The kind of fear this experience put into me is, was unlike any kind of fear I'd ever felt. The original post have of 200 comments. If you would like to see more about this encounter, the link is in the description below. So a few months ago, I was cycling home from my friend's house. It was pretty late, and it was relatively dark. The sky was a dark blue, and everything looked either black, dark grey, or brown. To get to my house, I cycled down a long, quiet road next to a large field. 
Around a third of the way up the road, are some trees on either side that hunch over the road. To my right, about 15 yards away from me. I see something quickly retreat back into the trees. It was tall, grayish pink. I'm short-sighted, so I didn't make much of it. Especially considering it was dark. I initially thought it was just a smaller tree swaying back, but there was no wind. And if it was a tree, it wouldn't have literally shifted away. It would have stayed in the same spot and pivoted on it. My ride home from then on was. Well, something. I constantly kept checking behind me, and trying to convince myself what I saw was just an animal or something. I've seen things in the woods before, I've seen a creature similar to this at the end of my street, stood by a lamppost. I'm not looking to know what it is, or could be, I just want to know if anyone has seen anything similar. Here are some of the comments from this post. Josette 22 commented. In which state do you live? And did you happen to see any facial features? OP responded to Josette 22. I live in England. It didn't really have any facial features, it just had this dry, ragged skin. CBD212 responded to OP. I've seen something similar, walking back from a viewpoint. Never been back to that spot since. I was walking a trail nearby a major city, with my friend at around 9.35 pm. We were walking back to the parking lot, after walking the trail. I didn't see anything at first, my friend was the one who pointed out. He said, I think we're being followed. In a joking way, but then he said. We need to get away from that right now. There's something wrong with that, it ain't normal. I looked behind us, and saw something really pale or wearing something bright white, and running weirdly slow towards us, in a janky, awkward way. It wasn't making any noise, but it seemed like a light was following it. It was illuminated from above, but there were no street lamps. It looked like it was running fast, but it was so slow that I was able to jog ahead of it. And yell at it, and it still couldn't catch up. It obviously wasn't a person, because of the way it moved and held itself. Its arms were weirdly at its side, and while it ran. Its legs were spread in a weird way. It was still chasing us when we got to the parking lot, there was an old man with his dog, who obviously saw it. And looked terrified when he saw us running away from it. Another thing I should mention, a lot of the crawler descriptions I've read here. Say that they're short and have long faces, but this one was super skinny and short, couldn't have been over 5 feet. Honestly, I probably could have drop kicked into the woods. But I was scared, and running at the time. Anyway, the light and height makes me think it might not be a crawler. But everything else, paleness, setting, time of day, facial features, lines up and sounds like a crawler or ashman. I couldn't get any pictures or a video, because I was trying to make sure my phone didn't fall out of my pocket while I was running. Anyone have an idea of what this might have been? Here is a few comments from this post. The other guy 952 commented. Seems like it may have been far behind you, if you weren't sure if it was wearing white or its skin was just that pale. I'm a little confused on the light from above. Was it glowing? And you assumed it was reflecting light, or was there some noticeable light source above it? This sounds like a crawler sighting, and crawlers are so pale they almost appear to glow. Are there any other details you can remember? Can you describe the facial features, body proportions, other details? Was it always the same distance away or did it get closer? OP responded to the other guy 952. It could have been glowing, but whatever it was. It was bright enough, that I could see it through the trees. And that's how I was able to tell how fast we needed to run to stay away from it. There was no light source above it, you had to follow the trail using flashlights. I didn't get a good look at its face, because of the light and because it was moving. But for body proportions, it had long skinny arms and legs. And a short, just as skinny torso. It did seem to get closer, when we slowed down. But never close enough, for me to be scared enough to try and fight or anything like that. Just close enough, that we knew it was chasing us. The other guy 952 responded to OP. Sounds very crawler-like to me. They appear to be so, so pale, it's hard to mistake them for anything else. SNU97330 also commented. What city in Texas was this near? 
OP responded to SNU 97330. Austin. Health Super responded to OP. What trail in Austin? Horns for Life 22 responded to Health Super. Or Snap, I'm in Northwest Austin. Are you enjoying the encounters so far? If yes, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our cryptid, or any of our other series, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you would like to support this channel, and have more access to me and your fellow community members, join our Discord. Here you can submit your own encounter, have early access to videos, and so much more. Link is in the description. Share in the comments, what you think of the encounters discussed so far. I wanted to share this story. Though it doesn't involve a sighting. It involves all the other evidence that is difficult to ignore. We've bought land in Washington recently. It'll be about a year before we start building there. But, we visit periodically, and I just recently came back from a two-day camping trip on the land. A few months back, we pulled into a dirt road, leading onto our property. And noticed a perfect pyramid of trees. That had been interlocked into a tapestry, that simply couldn't have happened by human hands. One reason is, that the pyramid-like interlocking, which was clearly done with skill, was at least six feet off the ground. We joked that maybe some teenagers could have done it, but I personally really doubted that some kids could climb up the trees. Six feet high. And successfully bend tree trunks into an interlocking grid, that high up? It would take far too much force and power. I don't even think grown men could get such thick trees to bend in this fashion. The trunks had to have been at least 8 to 9 inches in diameter, so we're talking strong trees trunks. Not bendable baby limbs. Fast forward to the previous weekend. We pulled onto our property late at night, after sundown. Arriving late on Friday night. Within 5 minutes of arriving, I heard loud haunting ape-like howls that didn't sound anything like a wolf, bear, or normal animal sounds. I've spent enough time in the woods, in my life, to know when I'm hearing something that isn't elk, bear, owl, or dog. These howls were human-like, and it was clear that something enormous was sending a message out there. It did it four to five times. Then it stopped. We slept the first night without issue. Except for one thing. The very next morning, a tree had been bent like a perfect rainbow. Directly over the trail, ten feet away from our truck perfectly going over the trail in an upside down U shape over the road. The second night, was the night that was remarkable. Within 15 minutes of hitting the sack, in our teardrop trailer. Windows were open, and I was enjoying the forest breeze. I immediately heard footsteps, distinct human bipedal footsteps. Walking around the trailer. It moved with a pace that was distinctly two-footed, and it was clearly large. Much like a metronome beating. Leaves were all over the ground, which made it easier to hear the pacing footsteps. This went on for at least an hour. Then it stopped. I placed my hand in a cup-like position behind my ears, to help increase my hearing abilities. I fell asleep for a few hours, then awoke to the same human-like crunching footsteps right outside the trailer. I then heard actual talking, from what I believe was a Bigfoot. One might say it was gibberish, but to be honest, it was clear they had an actual language. Somehow, I felt that it was female. The obvious soft vocalization, sounded like some sort of affirmation sounding noises. It sounded like words, only, the voice was clearly deep. Resonate. And not the sort of voice a regular human being could emulate, due to the depth of the voice. I am sure it wasn't humans pranking us. It spoke softly to another one, by using some sort of enunciation. And so, this was no longer just howling, but literally some type of talking. Obviously, it wasn't English. But it was most certainly a human-like vocal tone communicating. Next, I heard the trees begin to bend. If you can imagine a bending noise, sort of like a screeching, pushing, every five seconds this went on for an hour. Screech, push. Pause. Screech. Push. Pause. This pattern of pushing and pausing, went on for a long time and it was directly happening right outside of the teardrop trailer. I knew I was going to wake up to more bending activity. For some reason, I didn't feel scared. 
I have always been psychic, a little when it comes to feeling intentions of humans or animals around me. Something deep inside of me, felt that these beings were loving. Kind, sort of like protectors of the forest. I listened to them as long as I could, until I was just too tired to continue listening, to their activities outside of the trailer. I fell asleep again. The following morning, there were three more trees perfectly folded. Curved like rainbows. Arches, right over the trail next to our truck. One was directly at the nose of the truck. I've taken photographs and will upload them soon. Somehow, I feel that they were saying welcome. I think they know we purchased the land. Look, if they had wanted to hurt us, they could off. They never touched our stuff, touched the trailer, nor did they attempt to scare us. If anything, it was like they were attempting to not scare us, and wanted to be as quiet as possible. I felt that the female was guiding the whole event that night. Can anyone tell me more about the tree bending formations, and if there's any clues as to which formations mean what? My heart tells me that they did this to say hello, in a loving, kind way. It hasn't scared us, and we still plan on building there. I had an idea, that if we go camping there again in the fall, I'm going to tie flowers around the trunks that they bend, to let them know. We accept you and honor you. I refuse to have bad feelings between the Bigfoot and us. I want us to cohabituate on the land peacefully. My first impressions of these beings, is that they are not out to hurt anyone. And that they might even be able to communicate with humans. If humans would treat them with respect, and not try to hunt them down. Clearly, they're going to be more intelligent than regular large apes around the world. They're bipedal, and obviously have above average intelligence. Judging by the fact, I heard an actual language coming out of one. There are many intriguing comments on this post, but due to time. I couldn't post them. If you would like to learn, the link is in the description below. Back in 2013, me and my cousin had an encounter with the Moiho man, Bigfoot. So me and my cousin were both 18 at the time, we just finished our last year in high school. And we were on our end of the year holidays. And we both had no idea on what we were gonna do on our break. My cousin suggested that we go spend a week up in the coast, with one of grandfathers. Now before I move on, we live in a small in town called Gisborne, 40,000 population. And the coast, is pretty much the rural area near my town. All bush and forest pretty much. And our family has a homestead, in a small settlement called Waipiro Bay. Our grandfather was happy we were there, to spend some time with him. I was happy to be there too, just something about being in the bush just relaxes and clears my mind. Anyway, after a long day of hearing sheep and cutting up wood. Our grandfather told us that we should go spotlighting for eels, for our dinner. We waited till around 20 hundred, and off we went. Now my grandfather's house is on this hill and right below it, at the back of his house. Is this trail that leads to a creek trail, the creek trail is about a one hour walk. And the sides is fully covered in thick brush. Unfortunately, the eels were too small to catch, we get to the end of trail and turned back the way we came. As we were walking back, we started heard these weird squeals coming from the left side of the bushes, so we stopped. Turned out head torches off and she just listened. In my mind, I thought it was just a wild boar running around. And my cousin said the same thing as well. We turned our torches back and carried on through the creek. About five minutes later, we can hear the squeals again, but this time they were louder and closer. And something was rubbishing through the bushes. We stopped, turned our torches off and listened. We both face where the noise was coming from, and we could see this black silhouette staring at us. My cousin reached, to turn his headlamp on and there he was. Staring right at us. The Moiho man. His face covered in thick black. Grayish hair. Orange. Yellow bright eyes. Teeth like a canine, hands as big as my head. He looked at us and let he out this big huff, and stepped back into the bushes and off he went. Me and my cousin, both just looked at each other. Let's this sigh of relief out and carried on back to the house. We never said word on our way back, just silent. We get back to the house, and grandfather says. No luck on the eels. And my cousin replies, I think we just saw the Moiho man. My grandfather looks at us and says, yeah, 
I've seen him around here a few times as well. I just leave him be. I was shocked when said that, I was like. Wait, you've seen him too. My grandfather said, yup, I've seen him when I'm out hunting. He's come to the house a few times too. But he doesn't come to close though. So, I just let him be. And he also told us, he didn't want us to go out and look for him either. Like we were gonna do that. But my grandfather believes that, the Moiho man is some ancient guardian, that watches over the local forest near him. I'm 28 now, and I still think night at times, the only other person I've told this story to is my partner. She believed me, she's also had some pretty weird encounters. Experiences before we met. Here are some of the comments from this post. Hooped Checks commented. Fellow Kiwi. Seen something similar as well, but no details. Have friends who have also seen him or them. But with more supernatural details. New Zealand is an interesting place, which I feel like we know nothing about. OP responded to Hooped Checks. You are definitely right on that bro, especially in the East Coast. The locals will tell you an infinite amount of stories of people seeing weird. Supernatural things up there. Like the goat man or the pale man and his white horse. That's a good campfire story that one. Hooped checks responded to OP. Never heard of the pale white man and horse. Can you share anything about it? I'm not sure if it was the Moiho man I saw, but it was running extremely fast. Pitch black and like 8 to 9 feet tall. Was super scary, and I'll never forget it. There are quite a few comments on this post, some are a little too sketchy to post on one of my videos. If you would like to dig further into this story, the link is in the description below. This story takes place in the late 90s, early 2000s. My dad was in the Navy, and at the time of this story he was on leave, visiting home. This incident took place in rural Pennsylvania, in the Allegheny National Forest. I don't know if this has any significance, but our town has a huge native history, with a reservation just north of us. My dad was seeing an old friend from high school, and they were driving along one of the very empty roads surrounded by woods in our area. The road was dug into a giant and very steep hill, covered in huge towering evergreen trees. As they were driving, suddenly a small black figure launches 40 feet from the upslant of the hillside and lands on the pavement right in front of the car. They hadn't stopped yet, and they're just about to hit the figure's dead corpse. Until right when they're about to hit it, and it springs up and jumps over the guardrail, and down the hillside. Apparently, they both saw it, but didn't know. So they both sat in silence, not wanting to look crazy. Until my dad's friend says, Dude. Was that a effing monkey? My dad says, I don't know. I thought I was just seeing shit. My dad said that all he saw, was that it looked like a chimp, except its fur was much longer and rattier. It hung down from its arms, and it was matted and wet. He didn't get a glimpse of anything else. A few years later, when the internet came along. He found out about the skunk ape. He maintains to this day that he thinks it was a skunk ape. Any ideas? Here are a few comments from this post. Frog Morton commented. Allegheny is a known hot spot. Google Allegheny Sasquatch pictures, and you'll see some pretty strange trail cam pictures. Go Wahini agreed with Frog Morton. Yeah, that is a good suggestion about trail cams, because those are very common nowadays. Not just hunters or property owners, but lots of scientific researchers set them up in various parts of the US. Probably other countries too. For research and data collection. There are normally quite a few research projects up on Zooniverse. Which is a platform for folks, as citizen scientists, to help out by reviewing trail cam photos. And video? And noting what animals are found. Which makes me wonder, if these creatures are out there, especially big ones like Bigfoot or skunk apes. Wouldn't we see more evidence on trail cams too? Ross915 responded to Go Wahini. The thought is that they don't like the infrared lights coming from the trail cams. Most first-hand accounts will say, they stay just out of range or break them before walking by. There are many more comments on this post, if you would like to dig deeper into this story. The link is in the description below.
On Friday night, my significant other and I started driving into state to visit our family, for a long weekend. We were on the road for two hours, on a pretty desolate highway, until we reached their house a little past midnight. They live in a housing complex surrounded by woods. The way the complex is set up, is that there's sectional buildings and a huge parking lot in the center, and big woods surrounding suburban area. People were still awake and left their balconies open, in different parts of the complex. Since it was a nice, summer night. We got out of our car, and started to unload our bags. I have 20-20 peripheral vision to the point, if there was a tiny bug moving, I'd see it. What I saw, in the corner of my eyes, while my side was to the building entrance, was a dark figure in front of the brightly lit doorway. I didn't think anything of it, for a second. And just assumed someone was entering or exiting. Then I thought, how are they being so quiet? We were 40 feet from the door. Double take. I quickly turned to look, and there was no one in the doorway. I reflexed my head back in disbelief to double check. My significant other looked at me since I looked so confused. What it looked like to me, in the flash, was a dark figure at least five or six feet tall. From where I was standing and they had their arms spread out. As we were finishing up, getting out all our bags. We heard owl hooting and cooing right behind us. To the trees that sit by the side of our section of the complex. I've never heard owls there, in the three years they've lived there. My husband looked at me and was like, did you hear that? I didn't even respond, since I was getting scared. Instead I urgently said, we need to go right now. I'm not new to aliens, so I know owls symbolize aliens. We rushed inside. Once we got in, we settled in shortly. Our cat, Francis, was greeting us in the doorway. Which was normal since he usually senses us coming. After half an hour, Francis was still hanging out near the entrance of the apartment door. He was meowing and looking up at the door. I walked up to him and was baby talking to him, asking him what he's doing there. And if he was expecting anyone. And then letting him know, there's no more guests for tonight sweetie. Come over here. I was confirming that I intended to not be visited by any paranormal things, since paranormal things are not new to me. The odd thing was he kept going back there through the night. My significant other and I, finally went to bed at around 2 to 3 am. We were hanging out in the bedroom, just reading things on our phones and computers. We were talking about the owl we heard outside and how freaky it was. My significant other was trying to tell me to relax about it but honestly, I felt this fearful anxiety rush over me. The bedroom was smelly and he wanted to open the window. But I was too scared, and told him not to open any windows. And we'll just have to sleep with the smell. He knew it was because of what we heard outside. At that exact moment, we both heard a knocking sound on the wall facing the exterior of the house. Three knocks to be exact. I was freaking out, but tried to rationalize that someone had access to the wall the sound was coming from. Like maybe if there was a balcony there. But I checked later the next day and there wasn't, it was an exterior wall that faced the woods. To say the least, that's not the end of the night. At 4.30 am, when we already turned off the lights. We heard a hissing sound coming from outside. I woke my significant other, and told him to listen. He was very alarmed and cautious, at that point and wanted to open the blinds. I told him to close our vent, even though the vents don't even make that sound. It sounded like a snake. He checked outside, through the little spaces in between the blinds. But didn't see anything. The hissing stopped. We both prayed to God and tried to get some rest. Honestly these were really freaky events that happened in one night. There was some weird thing that happened two months ago, and I think my mother-in-law was also saying she heard something weird outside a few months ago. There's something weird going on here. Moreover, the freaky sounds continued on to tonight. What the heck? This is unnerving. Here are a few comments from this post. Silent Rogue commented. Honestly, I think you're freaking yourself out for nothing. All the oddities you perceived here are actually quite mundane. Even the figure you saw, in the corner of your eye, could have easily been a misperception. Scro24 also commented. I got a Bigfoot vibe from this. You mentioned things that I've heard in groups I'm in. Dark figure that was there then wasn't. Banging on outside of house. 
hissing sounds, they make several weird sounds. They can mimic animals, in the woods. And will communicate that way when people are around. People that go searching for them, will get a sudden feeling of anxiety or doom. If they get too close to their area, they will know it's time to leave at that point. I would say check for footprints, if you can. Maybe a cheap camera facing the window. Good luck. OP responded to Dsgrow 24. It might have been. I didn't know Bigfoot could mimic other animals, but that's good to know. Thanks. Why would Bigfoot try to agitate me throughout the night though? Silent Rouge responded to OP. First of all, Bigfoot are notoriously elusive. It would not be standing there, in front of a brightly lit doorway. Just five to six feet away from you for no reason. And I doubt they have the ability to disappear in the blink of an eye. Secondly, these are big creatures, usually at least eight feet tall. I'm pretty sure this is something you, and your significant other, would have noticed. My family is Russian. Both my parents are from Siberia, northern Russia. And were both born in a city called Omsk. Anyways, a couple of days ago my dad and I got into a conversation that kept deviating from the original topic. And eventually reached a point when we started talking about paranormal occurrences in our lives. I asked him why he believes in yetis. A long time ago, he told me he believes in yetis. But didn't explain why. My dad is not the type of guy who believes in paranormal activity. He thinks ghosts and aliens are all BS. And it was to my surprise that he believes in Yeti. Sasquatch. Bigfoot, whatever you wanna call it. Anyways, he sits up straight, clears his throat, and tells me the following. My dad is 51 years old, and in his 20s, he served in the military. He served in a place called Sputnik. A village close to the Russian border with Norway. If you look it up, you can still see the barracks and the whole military camp itself, pretty fascinating. All heavy-duty military supplies were always stored far away. Even from the military camps itself, and kept as far away as possible from human activity, typically in a forest. One day, a group of ten people, one of whom was my father, were tasked to go on an expedition to the warehouse to restock military supplies in the camp. This required many people, because loading up the trucks with very heavy equipment and ammunition was a rather grueling task. My father gets in the truck together with the others and gets on the road. They reached the place far later than anticipated, because of something along the lines of, we got a flat tire. The place they were going to, is located near a city that's on the bank of one of the hundreds of rivers you can see on the map. And the place was called Lovo Zero. They get there during the night? The only thing that was illuminating the forest were the stars. Since it was so dark and everyone was so tired, they decide to sleep over at the warehouse. They slept over at a dugout, not too far away. Once they get there, everyone takes their spot on the floor and says goodnight. But no matter how much my dad was tired, he couldn't fall asleep. He stayed up for another 30 minutes, before standing up and seeing everyone with their eyes open. No one was asleep. He had thought he was the only one awake, but he wasn't. The thing that was keeping him up was a sense of discomfort, that he couldn't explain. And he decided to share this with the others. Everyone nods and says that they are all experiencing the same exact feeling. This wouldn't let them rest peacefully. Eventually, another 30 minutes go by and the discomfort has now evolved into a mild fear and panic. At this point, everyone is really concerned, because they've got to wake up early tomorrow to move heavy boxes and sleeping was essential. They keep laying in silence. All of a sudden they hear a very strong thump on the roof of the building. The thumping persists, and it sounds as if someone extremely heavy is walking on the roof. The roof was wooden. It was a sod roof, with grass covering it, and my dad could tell for a fact it was someone walking. Because of the creaking the boards made. Simultaneously, everyone, as discovered the next day, starts hyperventilating and everyone's hearts start beating extremely fast. The thumping the creature made was so loud it resonated in my dad's ears, and he felt his insides shake. One of the guys passed out. At a certain point, the creature descended from the roof and started walking around the dugout. And one of the guys that was proud enough to open his eyes and look around, said that the creature was peeking inside, but since it was dark, he could only see a silhouette. 
eventually, whatever it was that was causing all of this left. And everyone went back to sleep. The next day, one of my dad's buddies asked a passing by local about this phenomenon. And he said it was completely in the ordinary, and even called it a specific name, which unfortunately my dad does not remember. Also, consider the fact that this all happened during the times of the Soviet Union. As you may or may not know, the Soviet Union was a complete atheist state. No cults, no belief in spirits, no religion. And people who believed in that sort of stuff were frowned upon. My father and the nine other soldiers are ideology-packed elite troops, and honestly, hearing this from him sounded crazy, and I knew for a fact it was real. Feel free to ask questions. I'll get a direct response from my dad, since we're always nearby each other in this period. Due to time constraints, I couldn't include the comments from this post. I highly recommend checking them out. The link is in the description below. This has been a crazy ride and I'll bring you any updates in future videos. If you've stuck with me until the end, you're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the Cryptid series, or any of my other series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss a future video. If you enjoyed this content, smash the like button and leave a comment down below. If you would like to support this channel, and be a part of a growing community, we have a Discord server. Check out the link in the description. You can also submit your own encounters, and have more access to me and your fellow community members. Join the community. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.